addition to iRacing's official racing program, subscribe members can also organize, administrate, and participate in their own racing events utilizing our hosted racing section. These events can utilize many different combinations of content available on the iRacing platform, allowing everything from additional practice sessions for upcoming events to unique and bespoke racing unseen elsewhere on iRacing. Today, we are going to walk you through the hosted racing wizard and how to use it to set up a custom racing event. Before we get started, make sure that you have enough iRacing dollars in your iRacing wallet so that you may create your event. It's important to note, the only person that needs to pay for hosted racing is the member or administrator who sets up the hosted session. To all other members who simply join a hosted session, it is free to race. Generally, the cost of creating a hosted session is 50 cents per hour, not including any discounts, for the server time. You can add iRacing dollars into your wallet by going to Store and selecting iRacing dollars. From here, make sure to select the Buy option and enter in the amount you need and finalize the payment. To begin setting up your event, click the Hosted button on the iRacing homepage and then select Create a Race at the top right or on the sidebar under Go Racing. This will take you to the Race Creation Wizard, which will take you through each setting needed to create a hosted event. At the top, you will see a row of tabs, each covering a different portion of the event creation. You can go through the recommended order of these tabs using navigation buttons on the bottom of the window or jump to a specific tab by clicking on the tabs themselves. For advanced users, you can skip the wizard steps and instead use the All Steps button at the bottom left to see all of the event options at the same time. Several options also have a tooltip associated with them which you can read by hovering over the blue question mark symbol next to the name of the setting. The first tab covers racing information. The button on the top right makes the event a league race. League admins use the same creation tool as hosted admins to set up their sessions, and toggling this on will allow you to schedule a league session in a league you own or manage instead of a hosted session. Below the header are areas to list the public name of the event, set a password to the event, and add a description, which will let you describe the event in additional detail. Tab 2 covers settings related to the session details. The first box lets you select which of iRacing server farms you wish to use to host your event. Make sure to select the server farm which best accommodates the region of drivers you wish to race with. The next area allows you to set the time you wish the event to begin and for your rental time to begin. This can be set to start as soon as possible here, or can be used to schedule events at a specific date and time in the future. Note that your iRacing wallet will not be charged for the server time until the event launches, so if you schedule an event for later, make sure you have the funds necessary to host the event at that time. This tab allows you to add administrator status to drivers ahead of the event. Admins have full control over the server, including the ability to mute, penalize, disqualify, and or remove any driver in the event. They can also throw cautions and perform several other server-related functions. Make sure you are giving admin access only to other people whom you trust it with. To add a driver to the admin list, simply click the Add an Admin button and either use the preset list to select from your friends and recent drivers you've encountered, or use the search screen to find a specific driver. You can also add in admins during the event by right-clicking on their names in Sim and selecting Make Admin. This functionality only applies to drivers in Sim, so if your admin is going to be spectating your event, make sure to add them before the event begins. A full list of all admin commands while in Sim can be found here or by typing exclamation mark help in your chat box.
This tab covers the total amount and the breakdown of the time you are renting the server. First, you must decide if you wish to host a conventional style event that includes at most one practice session, one qualifying session, and one race session. Be sure Enable Heat Racing is not selected and then choose your desired event configuration from the event type drop-down list. I'll cover heat racing here in a moment. Note that Open Qualifying refers to a more Grand Prix style qualifying session where the track is open to all drivers for a set amount of time and drivers can see each other on track. Lone Qualifying, however, refers to a more stock car style qualifying session where each driver must complete a set number of laps by themselves on the racetrack. Drivers will not be able to see each other on track for the entirety of the time given for this session. Next, select how long you wish to rent the server for. The cost of the rental will increase as the duration is increased, and the total cost can be found listed on the checkout button. Next, adjust how long you want each session to take by dragging the markers on the timeline. Note that you will be charged for the duration of the server rental regardless of how much time your sessions actually use, so make sure to plan ahead and set the event duration with as much or as little time as you need to complete your entire event. If you are using a lone qualifying session, you can also select how many laps each driver is allowed to make during their qualifying attempt with this drop-down menu. Finally. Use this toggle to decide if you wish your race to be decided solely on time limit or based on a specified number of laps to be completed within a time limit. Your event duration will determine how long the server is rented and will end races on time even if the laps designated are not completed. Therefore, make sure you are setting enough time in your event that the laps can be completed, but also balance that with how long you wish to race. For example, if I'm setting up a stock car racing event, I usually base the time given for the race based on how long it would take for the field to complete double the amount of laps at a normal race pace. This allows a good amount of time to complete the race, but also will give the race a defined end should there be an extraordinary amount of cautions. Ultimately, the time you set for the race will vary based on your racing lap totals, the size of the track you are racing on, the vehicles being used, and so on and so forth. So consider this heavily before deciding on a time limit. If you intend to have more than one racing session, including heat racing formats seen in touring cars and dirt track racing, make sure to select the Enable Heat Racing option at the top right. iRacing comes with several pre-built options for heat racing, but will also allow you to create your own. For more information on the Heat Racing Wizard, check out our dedicated video on Heat Racing here. Finally, once everything is set up, you can see a complete breakdown of your session time limit by clicking on Time Limit Details. This will show you a simplified breakdown of the different sessions in your race. If you are using a Heat Racing format, it will also show you a preview of the setting for each session being used in that format. This tab concerns additional parameters for the event you are creating. At the top, you will see a toggle to enable team driving. Enabling this setting lets the event utilize iRacing's team racing system, allowing multiple drivers to race together in a single car. When enabling team racing, you can select the minimum and maximum number of drivers allowed on each team using this slider, and indicate whether the driver that qualifies the car must also start the car in the racing session. Finally, this drop-down determines whether any additional team balancing will be used in the race. For more about team racing, including more about the fair share rules, watch this video on the team racing system in iRacing. After team racing, the next two options determine who is allowed to register your event, with the first slider determining the range of corresponding licenses allowed in the race, and the second determining the limits for I-rating totals allowed to register. Remember that these requirements correspond to the discipline your race will be utilizing between road, oval, dirt road, and dirt oval, so plan accordingly. The next slider determines if there is an incident limit in your session. 
Hitting this limit will automatically disqualify a driver from the session. You can also turn off the incident limit by selecting No Limit here. The incident warning settings will allow you to set warnings about incidents should drivers continue to accrue them. You can set a warning to be issued at a constant rate, for example every five incidents, or to be issued once after a specific incident number and then issued at a different rate from then on. Every time a warning is issued to a driver, they will receive a drive through penalty and will have to come back to pit road during a green flag to serve their penalty. This setting determines what kind of qualifying scrutiny will be used, which defends against any unsportsmanlike conduct during qualifying. Here, you can disable car damage during the session. If you want all of the competitor's cars to be invulnerable to damage during the event. Below this, you can choose to deactivate any stamped iRacing numbers or decal layers during the session. A new feature to the Hosted Racing Wizard allows admins to pick a specific decal layer that will be printed on all applicable cars during a session. This will also change where the car number is stamped, so if you are using a custom paint, make sure that you are using a SIM stamped number paint before entering a session with this setting enabled. Using a custom number paint will not enable a replacement decal on that car. This setting determines the level of driver assistance allowed in the session. Most of these settings are self-explanatory, but one setting to take note of are relaxed camera views, which allows drivers in sim to utilize exterior camera views while driving during the event, utilizing the page up and page down keys. This can be useful if you are staging photos on track or if you are curious about driving in iRacing in third person. Below, this toggle allows you to restrict the event results to be given only to participants in the session. This toggle will also restrict the session to only be spectated by those in a selected league or club as determined in the first tab of the wizard. Finally, you can limit the entries to come from a selected league with this option. This can be a league you manage or a separate league on iRacing. This tab allows you to determine the weather in your event. iRacing can generate a realistic weather pattern with this toggle, or you can set the weather pattern manually below. The toggle here determines whether the sky will change with the passage of time or stay static, determining cloud cover and sun position. The initial settings for weather can be configured below, and the amount of variance at the start or during the event can be set here, with zero allowing no change in the weather, while 100 allowing the weather to completely shift from clear skies to overcast and everything in between. This tab allows you to select which cars you want to use in your event. These cars can either be scored as a singular class or can be split into multi-class racing as well. By enabling multi-class racing, you can determine whether the grid is set by qualifying time alone or by class, with the gridding by class separating the fields into their respective classes, and then order being determined by qualifying time. As you add vehicles to the car roster for the event, you can also customize any additional balance of performance or BOP settings for each car, including the fuel capacity, weight penalties, engine power, or limiting the tire sets to be used during the race. You can also dictate a specific setup that drivers must use during the race and in qualifying by enabling fixed setups here. You can use iRacing setups that are built for each car or your own custom setup, all of which are listed in the drop-down menu. If you are using a custom setup, make sure the setup you wish to use is saved on your computer in the car's setup folder. Then upload it to the event creation tool. Once completed, you can select the setup to be used on all examples of the car in that event. This tab allows you to select the track your event will utilize. If you are curious about a track and want to view its information, click on the track info button here. When you select your track, make sure it is using the configuration you were planning to use as well. 
as many tracks have different configurations to fit different styles of racing. You can search through every track on iRacing by using the search box here. You can search either by the track's name or by its configuration name. For example, trying to find every example of a Legends Oval by searching for Legend. This tab allows you to set additional parameters based on the track being used. If you are setting up a league race, you can set your own starting grid with this button. Note that this will force your event to use only a practice and race format. In this submenu, you can choose a list of drivers from which to set the starting grid, either by the roster of the league or by the roster of a previous event in a league season the second only possible if the race is being scheduled within that same season itself. From there, you can choose what data will determine the order, including finishing position or I rating, and how the data is transferred to the grid, including a full invert of a previous race result. From here, make sure to save this grid order and return to the main tab to continue. If you aren't using a heat racing format, you can set the maximum number of drivers using this slider. This total will depend on the amount of pit stalls at the racetrack and whether they can be shared. Next, you can select the type of start that this race will have, a standing start or a rolling start. Here, you can select the restart rules, including how many lines are formed under the pace lap and where lap cars are placed. Setting the restart rules to 3x tells the sim that the first three restarts used under caution will be double file, before eventually switching to single file on the fourth and future instances of a caution. Below this option is a toggle option for cautions that happen within a lap of the previous caution. Should this situation arise, this option will tell the sim that the second caution's restart will be single file to help deter additional incidents seen in double file restarts. This option allows you to select which pace car you would like to use during the event. Below this are three more sliders. The first controls how many fast repairs or resets that drivers have access to during a race. The second option concerns how many green-white checkered attempts will be made during the race. Keep in mind that this only applies to races using a lap difference, as races that end on time will not be extended. The final slider controls how many joker laps are required by competitors to be taken on races utilizing rallycross circuits. This slider controls the required joker laps for every kind of active racing session, including heats, consolations, and feature races. On some tracks, there is an option for an abbreviated pace lap, with the field gridding on a later straightaway versus pit road or on the start-finish line. The automatic full course yellow system is iRacing standard caution system used in many official races in oval racing to throw full course cautions. Turning this setting off requires any caution to be thrown by a server administrator. Keep in mind, this can still be done by admins if the setting is toggled on. The lucky dog rule allows for the first car one lap down to be waved around the pace car during a caution period as long as they did not receive a 0x or higher incident during the time of the caution. Wave arounds refer to drivers who stay off pit road during a caution period and are pacing in front of the race leaders as a result. With this setting on, those drivers are waved around the pace car, regaining one lap in the process. With this setting off, drivers will be forced to rejoin the line with the rest of the lapped cars. Finally, the Do Not Count Caution Laps option means any laps completed while under caution are not counted towards the total race distance. In order to have this setting on, automatic full course cautions must also be enabled. This tab concerns the dynamic state and condition of the racetrack during different sessions in your event. You can set default settings for your track state for each session using the slider or elect to carry this state over from session to session during the event. This option allows you to clean off marbles and dust off the racetrack during the initial session of your event. 
You can also randomly generate a starting state for the track by selecting the Generate option during the initial session of the event. This tab concerns the time of day settings used in Sim. By default, the Sim is set to May 15th of the current year, and several different times of day can be used. In addition, if dynamic sky is enabled, the passage of time can be accelerated during the session with this multiplier. The highest at this time is an 8x rate, which allows a full 24-hour cycle to take place over three real-world hours. However, each track can also be set to a specific time of day as well by toggling this setting. Here, a specific start time can be selected, and each session can be set to start at a certain time of the day as well, which can be teamed with the Track Conditions tab, allowing admins to simulate an event across multiple days. However, dates when the track is typically shut down for their off-season are not available to choose. With that, your hosted event is ready to post. Click the Checkout button to advance to your Session Summary page. Here. You can double check all of your event details before making the final purchase with the Buy Now option. Hosted events usually take about one to two minutes to process and be added to the hosted racing queue. If you opted to have your event start at a future time, you will be able to see your session as pending in the Hosted Session section of the interface. If needed, you can select it and make changes or even cancel your event. However, if your session is set to start immediately, you will not have the opportunity to edit any additional settings. For more information on hosted racing, check out our FAQ linked here, and contact support using the support link in the help section should other issues arise during your hosted event. Good luck out there, and happy racing!